I am Faz Sidigi. I am a specialist solution architect at Red Hat. And I'm Roberto Gardela, a cloud services black belt, also working for Red Hat. But today, Roberto and I have got a slightly different role. We're a part of a dynamic and very busy DevOps team called the Tiger Team. Um, at the moment, we're working on a project uh, which is developing a web application for one of our biggest open source customers. And because in our day-to-day -day activity, we need to orchestrate, um, a lot of, uh, uh, orchestrate a lot of thousands of Kubernetes jobs, we need a uh, tool that helps us run and build these workflows. And this is why we are using Argo workflows as the main part of our tooling. Like many other development teams out there, we are running on regular sprints. And um, as it seems, just today, earlier today, we did have a release day, and the latest version of our application um, is already deployed. Uh, like I said, we're a very, very busy development team. We're always working on um, deploying new features, uh, going through bug fixes, and all the weird and wonderful things that um, de all developers do. So we don't really have too much time to think about security. But it's worked for us so far. You know, we're developers. We develop and we deliver. And it's working. We're meeting our deadlines. So we're not bothering about that just yet. Now, like I said, our release date was today. The latest version of our app is already deployed. And if you'd like to see what our app looks like, please take your phones out and scan that QR code on the screen. If you like. Is it okay at the back? Can you, can you scan it? Okay. Right. So if you've already scanned the QR code, you'll be able to see that's the open source client we're working with. We are um, developing the web application for the ArgoCon event organizers. We're going to show you how our workflows in Argo workflows look like in a minute but just on a high level so you know what steps are involved in our workflow. So we first do a git clone in our workflow. Then we build and push our container images. And once they're ready, uh, we just deploy them to our Kubernetes um, clusters from there. And this is how we currently deploy our application. So you're very well aware that the time of the event has approached. And we're under so much pressure to release um, a lot of last minute changes. Now, in fact, our managers just called us and asked us to deploy some um, really pressured last minute changes immediately. So this is what we're going to do. And Roberto is going to show you what that work workflow looks like. So the first thing that we need to do is to deploy the new pipeline that we are already showing. And we will kick the second pipeline using the exact same workflow template. We have our, our workflows UI. And as you can see, we are running the um, CICD pipeline. And we will show the CICD pipeline that we already uh, deployed before to uh, run uh, and deploy our application in our Kubernetes clusters. So we have three um, different steps. We have the Git clone, we have the container build, and we have also the apply manifest and update manifest. So all of this is based in an um, open source project. You can go uh, into the um, GitHub repo, and uh, you can see, for example, this application. This application is a small application based in Golan, and uh, it's this application that uh, you can see in here. And also, um, during this, we'll clone the uh, repo um, using uh, an using this uh, cl clone repo, we are building the container and pushing this container to uh, the GitHub registry as well. And after that, uh, we are using the version one because uh, this is the version one um, deployment. And also we are applying uh, the different manifest within the um, repository. And uh, as you can see, the final uh, step will um, set the image and um, uh, we will update the image, um, deploying 
our final destination and uh, our final image as well. As you can see, we have the GitHub registry that is already pushed, and um, we already have the second version. So we run the exact same uh, pipeline as well uh, that is running in this moment. So the exact same pipeline uh, is uh, happening. We have the Git clone. We have also the container build. This container build is the exact same thing, but um, we uh, are storing, for example, and um, uh, we pushed this to uh, the registry using the version 2 because we are um, releasing a new version and also we apply the different manifests. And now it's um, updating the um, different deployments and using this to deploy our application. So our pipeline is finished. So again, same as the steps we saw earlier, we're doing a git clone, we're doing our build and push, this time for the second version of our application, and then from there on we deploy to Kubernetes. Now, if you refresh the app that you've just scanned and the QR code, you'd be able to see the latest changes that we've just deployed under so much pressure. Um, let's have a look at what those changes are. Oh, that's not what we were trying to deploy. What's going on? We've been hacked, and we've been held ransom for two million Hong Kongs. What's happening? So what happened? If we dig a little bit deeper, we can, say, we can check that our supply chain is hacked. So the first thing that we can see is our source code was compromised, and uh, somebody, a group of hackers, uh, tried to ask for money. Uh, and as um, a ransomware of 2 million Hong Coins, and they also compromised the Docker file as well, introducing some changes. And they also hacked the supply chain. And if you, we can check that we um, have compromised, and they changed the base image, and now they are using a base image that contains the CVEs, a backdoors, that compromise not only this uh, base image, also the whole cluster. Uh, put uh, this uh, Kubernetes cluster in danger as well. Okay, since we fell victim to this vicious attack, we started caring more about security. And what we learned was that what happened to us is what's described as a supply chain attack. A supply chain attack is when a third party software gets attacked or gets compromised, and as a result, all the end users that are dependent on that piece of software or piece of product will be affected. Um, this is often described as a more mature type of cybersecurity attack, uh, exactly for that reason, because it's a lot more impactful than just um, attacking one single target. You attack a third party provider, and as a result, you're reaching thousands of people or thousands of end users. Um, as a result of that. So it turns out um, the Docker image that we were using was downloaded from Docker Hub, and that was the sort of our compromise. And as a result, anything we built on top of that image was compromised as well. There was a report that was published in 2020. In that report, they analyzed the data uh, which was related to the supply chain attacks. And um, this is what the graph shows. This graph is co copied from that uh, report. As you can see, the number of supply chain attacks per year are growing exponentially. As you can see, something really bad happened in 2020. Does anyone remember the famous attack that happened in 2020? And we've got red hat t-shirts for the correct answer. The first correct answer, I guess, a red hat t-shirt. Yes, who <laughs> was that? Was it you? Yes, so we've got an X large and a medium. I'll leave them here for you at the end of the talk. Thank you very much. Thanks. Yes, so SolarWinds was responsible for that big jump in the, what you saw in the graph in year 2020. What happened in SolarWinds was uh, that a group of Russian attackers called Cozy Bear, they got held, a hold of the update server of SolarWinds, which is a very popular network monitoring tool. Um, and um, they just injected some malicious software into the update server. And as a result of that, over 18,000 organizations who use that update were affected. Um, it somehow reported that the cost of recovery from SolarWinds could be something in upwards of $100 billion. Another example of supply chain attacks is what happened to another network monitoring 
um, software, which was Kesaya. Again, uh, they got hacked, and then the hackers were asking for $70 million in Bitcoin in exchange for the universal um, decryption key. Another um, widespread, perhaps the most widespread example of these attacks is the Luck4j. The reason it's the most widespread is because um, Luck4j is a very popular logging um, library for Java applications, as we know, and um, a lot of applications out there are using Java, um, so it's, it's the most widespread. It's described as the most widespread. Um, so these are just a few examples of supply chain attacks. But we see that they're growing, um, and it's not just limited to the ones that we're just talking about here. So what is being done about this? Founded in 2020, the Open Source Security Foundation, or OpenSSF, has begun to devise improve the defenses against the software supply chain attacks. One of the uh, projects, it's six to a project that improved the defenses, providing a method for guaranteeing the end-to-end -end integrity of the software artifacts. So the answer of securing this software supply chain lies in digital signing the various artifacts that comprises these uh, applications. But there are several cha uh, challenges facing this software supply chain because sometimes and especially in the open source projects, the budget for these digital uh, tools is very, very uh, low or non-existent, for example, and uh, the software it's, itself is changing very frequently and the management of these private keys are challenging. So Sixto, that is a project of the Linux Foundation, is a new approach for signing, verifying and protecting software. It offers a set of tools that the different developers can use to sign the uh, software releases, and on the other hand, also the users can uh, use it for, for verify these signatures as well. And we have three major components in the Sixo project. First is Reco, Cosign, and Fulcio. Reco is a built-in transparency and time sample service. On the other hand, we have the Fulcio project that is a free root certific uh, certification authority, a free root TA, and we will focus in this demo in the cosign for container signing, verification, and storage that makes signature invisible infrastructure. So we're using six store in order to sign our images and push our signatures. But we still need another product in order to be, be able to verify those signatures against our images. And this is where Kiverno comes into play. Kiverno is a Greek word, and it means to govern. Um, and it's a product which is a Kubernetes policy engine. Uh, and as a Kubernetes policy engine, it allows you to verify, uh, mutate, or generate Kubernetes resources. One of the most attractive features of uh, Kiverno is the fact that it, it's all in YAML. So if you're already familiar and working with Kubernetes, there's no need to learn a new language. It's, it's already there. And the good thing about YAML is that, as human beings, we pretty much could understand what the code does just by looking Add a few lines of YAML. Now, if you look at that code, we've got one more Red Hat T-shirt to go. If anyone would like to share what they think this piece of software, or this piece of um, YAML does. Yes. Well, I can repeat repeat your answer. There's a microphone there. It's a bit far away. So. Excellent. Correct. Yes, that's exactly what it does. So it takes an image. First of all, it's a cluster-wide policy, as you can see in there. Um, the action is enforced, so it makes sure it does it. And uh, it verifies the image against a public key that um, it's already got. And then based on that, it decides whether the image passes or not. Now, let's look at what, what are the toolings and how are we using this? What are the toolings we're using and how are we using these toolings into securing our demo? So to secure the supply chain, we are using different tooling that we have in this picture. We have our workflows, Cosign, Kaverno, and Argo CD. Our workflows, we already discussed and showed the UI as well for running the different pipelines that we have. Also, we are using Cosign for signing and pushing the different uh, signatures to the GitHub registry. We are using Caverno to 
verify and check the different images as, for example, we uh, checked with the cluster policy and as well as uh, our workflows. In a separate use case, we will introduce Argo CD to show how Kiverno can use to protect also the Kubernetes clusters uh, in continuous uh, deployments or CD uh, pro uh, processes as opposite as the CI CD in Argo workflows. So this is to show you that we are using Argo CD for deploying all of the components that um, we uh, need to um, install the demo. And uh, this is all managed by Argo CD using GitHub as well. Uh, we can uh, go directly to the uh, Argo UI. We have uh, three main applications, uh, Argo um, apps. One is the Argo workflows. We have all the um, deploying Kyverno. And finally, uh, the workflow template as well. And we have this uh, Argo app of apps pattern that it's managing the different Argo CD applications as well. And if we go to the workflow templates, we will see that Argo CD is managing the different building blocks um, that we uh, already have in this uh, pipeline. And we have different, uh, for example, in this case, we have the sign image that is a workflow template and is fully managed and fully deployed using GitOps and Argo CD. So if we go directly to the workflow templates, we can see different things and also two different uh, CICD workflows. So we will deploy the um, next, uh, first we need to deploy the policy. And this policy is as uh, you um, saw before, a policy that uh, it's a, a cluster policy for checking the image against uh, a public uh, image. And on the other hand, we will, um, kicked another um, pipeline that includes, in this case, this sign image. This sign image is a step that additionally will use cosine for signing using a private key, the uh, image, and will automatically push the signature against the um, GitHub uh, repo. So in this case, in the um, GitHub repository, uh, we will have, um, and in the GitHub uh, container register as, as well, we will have two different things. First, we'll uh, have the image and also the signature because we are using this for pushing the signature as well. As you can see that it's running properly and it's uh, cloning um, the repo and we can see the different steps. So with the workflow that uh, Roberto just ran, we are rewinding to the first step when I started telling the story about deploying our application. But the difference is this time, rather than ignoring security, we are imp implementing those security steps which are signing our images and then verifying them against the signed uh, signatures here. So instead of doing the steps that we were doing, uh, which was the git clone, build, and then push and deploy to Kubernetes, now we're doing the git clone, we're building our image, and now, using SIGStore, we're signing the image and also pushing the signature to our container registry as well. And using Kiverno, as we just saw, then we verify these images against the public key that we hold. Um, and based on that, we decide whether we want to deploy into Kubernetes or not. So we will check if now it's in signed state, it's um, signing the image. So in the first place, we are building this container image. This container image will have a specific version that uh, we have the version three uh, tag that is v3 sign it. This is pushing also this image to the GitHub registry. Then we have the sign image that we commented. The sign image is signing the um, a container image that we already deployed, uh, pushed to the uh, GitHub registry, and is pushing also the signature into the uh, GitHub registry um, as well. And if we check the um, GitHub repository, we will see first that we already have our container image with this uh, specific tag, and uh, also alongside we have the second um, signature that if we checked matches with that. So in this uh, pipeline, we are first um, building the uh, container image and pushing the signature uh, to the GitHub registry. And also, Kiverno is 
will grab this signature and will match um, and will verify against the public uh, key as well. So in this case, uh, already we f um, deployed our, our application and if you run again uh, your application, you can see that effectively it's deployed. So if you already had the page up on your mobile phones, so if you just refresh the app or just rescan this QR code, you'll be able to see that now we have a healthy version of our application running again. Now, let's go back to the scenario that we had to release under pressure um, and we were ignoring security because we didn't have time for it. But then we got hacked and then we realized now we need to care about security. Um, and knowing what we know now about the tools we just talked about, let's see how we can use those in an event that we're being hacked to prevent from those hacked images to be deployed to our Kubernetes clusters. So this is what our steps look like. Um, we've got the Git clone and build image, and if you remember when we were doing the diff on, on Git, we were attacked on those two different sources. One of them was the GitHub source, and one of them was the container image that we were using. But now, because we're using Kiverno, and we're only allowing the signed images to be deployed to our Kubernetes clusters, because these images are tampered with, they're not going to be allowed uh, to our Kubernetes cluster. So we just put a stop in there. So even if we run the workflow, you're going to see in a minute the workflow is going to get to stop. So we will rerun the exact same hack, and meanwhile, we will present the second um, scenario when we are waiting till this finished, and we can uh, check also the uh, last scenario that we have, that it's um, deploying the Argo City um, uh, and securing the Argo City uh, applications as well. So we will deploy the last um, demo and then we can get back to the um, uh, previous demo in order to check if Kyberno did uh, and saved today as well. So we are um, using Argo CD for deploying uh, also our applications, but um, imagine that somebody hacked uh, our source code and also the uh, GitHub uh, repository that uh, Argo CD is linking and they pointed out to one specific tag uh, for um, the image registry and this uh, GitHub registry shows that um, effectively have uh, hacked as well and somebody pushed uh, this image registry to the um, and hacked uh, our image registry but using Kiverno we'll check and verify the image, we'll check for the different signatures, and then we'll deny the request because the signatures will mismatch. So as we can check directly in the um, Argo uh, CD, we can check that effectively we have this Argo um, application that we have a sync failed. For what reason? Because Iverno, through the admission uh, webhook, this um, uh, blocked the uh, different uh, uh, resource and uh, denied the request because the image verification failed because when verifies the image, shows that the signature mismatched. And for this reason, it's out of sync because cannot deploy the application because the uh, signature mismatched and then Kiverno um, saved the day. And on the other hand, the exact same scenario using the R workflows as well show that Kiverno will prevent of deploying the um, uh, wrong image because it's happening uh, the exact same thing. It's deploying, uh, it's preventing to deploy this application. And as we can see in here, if we check the logs of the container, the Kiverno admission uh, webhook denied the request because checked uh, against the uh, cluster policy of the check image and verifies that um, the image verification failed because the signature mismatched. Then also in both scenarios, first the Argo workflows and also in Argo CD, Kiverno saved the date um, and also uh, along with the um, Sixto signing the image. Right, so we saw today how some parts of our GitOps workflow 
uh, could be susceptible to supply chain attacks. And we also saw that how using Kiverno and Sixstore together, we can prevent this from happening. So next time you have five minutes, perhaps over a coffee break, I'd like to invite you to have a think about where this solution might be applicable to the way you're running your pipelines and your GitHub's workflows. And also how you're going to take this learning um, and implement it to your work. And not only your work, the work that you do with customers, partners, or colleagues of yours. Because after all, it's a chain and we're all in it together. Thanks for today. Next slide, we've got all the links we used in the demo. And mm -hmm. if there are any questions, we'll be here over the break as well. Yeah.